But we're coming at an incredibly significant time. And I think when you look at what we're going to talk about tonight, I'll, I think you'll be saying to yourself, I expect the Lord's going to come in a very, very short time. The evidence is very substantial. But first of all, let's look at what we've just read. Remember what we've just read. Look at verse 1 again. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for you know perfectly what that's going to be, how long that's going to be, and such like. But let's have a look at those words. You see, the word there, times, is the Greek word chronos, from which we get chronology. We know the dates. You know, we knew exactly the date of the Six-Day War. We knew exactly the date Russia would move into the Middle East or begin its move because we've had those dates given to us. Brethren have printed that material for us. We can see it all. But as well as that, we know the seasons. Hey, this is a period when it's wetter because it's this season, isn't it? Okay? Summer is hotter, winter is colder. The qualities, the signs of those seasons, we know. But then he goes on, he says, we know that perfectly, accurately, precisely, exactly. So this information is not something we should be dull on. We know it very, very exactly. And if we do, that should have an impact upon us, as verse 6 says to us, Therefore let us not sleep as do others sleep, but watch, and let it affect the way we walk, be sober in what we do. So there we are, we ought to be the watchman on the wall. We ought to be crying out, it's coming, it's coming. Now, remember also Christ's last words to us. Remember those words that he spoke? Look at the next verse, first of all, verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. So just before Armageddon, what about the believers? Behold, I come as a thief. Now, does everybody expect it? Is all the ecclesia alert? If they are, they'll be here. I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth, that's you. And keepeth his garments, that's what we must all do. Now we keep our garments and then we keep our covering that we've got through baptism, through association with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there is the exhortation Christ has given us. But now we want to look particularly at the signs. Now, I'm not going to do anything particular as far as the quotes are concerned. Come with me to Ezekiel chapter 38. And we're going to stick to that. I'd like you to have that open in front of you all the time tonight. I'm not going to read it through. You can whenever you need it. But what we're going to see is that Ezekiel 38 tells us this. It describes a Russian... European invasion of Israel opposed by Britain. Now we all know that. We've read it so many times. But let's just confirm that. Just take me a moment or two, maybe for somebody younger who may be here. Ezekiel 38 verse 15, have a look at it. It says to us, And thou shalt come from thy place, this is the invading army, Rosh, Meshach and Tubal, that will be out of thy place, out of the north part, RSV says from the uttermost parts of the north, the extreme north. Now, if we do the sums or the, the point, the compass, here's Jerusalem. Go north from there, and I usually ask the young ones, but I won't embarrass you. Um, how far north can you go? Well, you can't go any further north than the North Pole, correct? Okay, just south of the North Pole, there it is, Russia. No doubt about it, that's what he's talking about. So Russia is that power. Now, here's what we're going to consider tonight. We're going to look at that. That's Ezekiel 38. I put a few extra quotes in sometimes, but just stick to Ezekiel 38. The first thing we're going to look at is this. We're going to look how Russia must enter into the Middle East. Has it? Let's have a look. 2015... Brother Islet Collier said to us Russia would make his, begin its grand move. He said that back in 1941, based on Daniel chapter 7. Well, in 2015, 
He is from a British paper. The biggest red square military parade. Russia is actively preparing for war in Europe. They weren't quite right. They knew they were preparing for war. They could see it. They could see the arming going on. Since the Iron Curtain came down, most of the world thought we'd be in peace. But Russia has been arming. Been arming frantically to get ready. And so, that same year, just a few months later, she moved into the Middle East with the biggest military intervention outside of the Soviet Union for almost 30 years. Huge. There it was. They entered into the Middle East. Now, what has been the consequence of that? We did this last year we came. We'll look a little bit of some of the things we've got to overlap a minute. But you see, there was the Middle East. They went into the territory of Syria. They went into that area there and refugees began to be driven out. Look at the number that left. Four million of them. Ask yourself how many people are there in Fiji and multiply it up to see how many you have to get to get the number of people that fled. And when they fled down to Jordan, where do they put them? Jordan's a barren country. It's mainly desert. This is what it was like. Camp after camp like that. Would you like to live there? These are tents. And that's where they were being put up. What could they do with them? Others fled across to Europe. Now we looked at this picture last year. There it is, queuing up to leave. Desperate to get out of the fighting that's going on in Syria. Look at them. Some of them look like they got pushed over the other side and had to be pulled back in. Or swimming. <laughs> but they went out there to Turkey to get across into Europe. And many of those that went across there, the NATO chief said they are terrorists. They're carrying weapons. They're going into Europe to terrorise Europe. And indeed that was so. They moved in, in huge numbers. There they are pouring into Europe. Here's some of the countries they, went, they came from. And here's the numbers, I'm sorry, but I haven't updated it since 2016. But be that as may, they came in there and terrorism took place. Look at France, that's where it began, in the middle of Paris. 130 killed in one terrorist act. Wasn't it? Shocking. But was that the way, did they nip it in the bud? Did they stop it? No, look. Grew and grew. France has got the largest army in Europe. But over half of them are on the streets now as policemen. They can't defend the country from Russia. They're too preoccupied defending it from the terrorists within. <coughs> and now, that spread to Britain, didn't it, last year? Look at it. Here's flowers for the 22 that were killed up in Manchester. Look at that lovely girl. Killed along with many others. I've got a picture I didn't put up there, but picture of trains going along and the people inside the train. And nowadays, in Britain, there's soldiers going along with their machine guns, their automatic weapons, looking at the passengers to check them off. It's frightening. So coming back to that area, into that area has been moving now more and more equipment into the Russian area, into those ports. They've been building up their access into, you, into Syria. So they're pouring equipment in. If you go onto the web, you can find a site that shows you all the ships going past Turkey along the Bosporus. And many of them are Russian trip ships coming into this area, many of them, into the ports. And the headlines, Russia is getting serious. Russia builds a permanent naval base on the coast of Syria. That wasn't so last year. Here's some of the bases. Look at them. Weapons, ships, wharfs. Here's another one. Getting the equipment coming in from Russia. Now, I'm not sure all of that's come from Russia, but that indeed is what's happening. But it hasn't stopped there. Go back a little over a month, look at the date. Russia began building a military base 85 kilometres from Israel. 
Did you ever expect to see a military base of Russia on the borders of Israel before Christ came? We are being given cute signs to be ready. We need to be very, very serious about the truth. There it is, 85 kilometres. Began only a couple of weeks ago. And as well as that, now Israel, Russia has posted 800 troops, initial number, along the borders of Israel. 800 troops, five kilometres from the border of Israel. From the top of the Sea of Galilee right up to Golan. And Israel is very concerned. She's alarmed. Wouldn't you be? It's building up all the time. Five kilometres from Israel's border. But it hasn't stopped there. That was two weeks ago. Now, bam, in come another 2,000. Pouring into the area. They fly in mercenaries. In other words, these are people who have lost their jobs up in Russia and they've found, formed a, jo- a group of them who are being paid to come down there as mercenaries. Now, in Russia, most people get trained after they leave high school going into the, into the army. Then they get a job. Now they pull them out and they say, we'll pay you and go down there as a mercenary. You want to be fed? Well, that's what you've got to do. Move into the Middle East. And they're building the numbers up. Yes, under the Russian flag. Right at the borders of Israel. Now, did you expect to see that? It's absolutely staggering. How long have we got? That's the issue. Now, I might put another PowerPoint in. To, show, to highlight something that I really want. I'm coming back to this again and again. Major threats to world peace. We're going to look at them. The first one, Russia, on the borders of Israel. We know what that means. Ezekiel 38 says, soon, somewhere in the near future, Russia's going to cross over and go into Israel. But she's not stopped there. Libya is in civil war. About two or three months ago, Russia went into Libya via Egypt. There's a military base there. They took it over. It had been vacant. They took it over and then sent their troops into Libya to support this man, one side of the civil war, and pushed the other one out. They've taken control of Libya. Is that a surprise to us? Go and ask Mr. Banarama if he knew that. We knew that. Ezekiel 38 said that. And what are they there for? Oh, Putin to turn on the refugee tap. Well, hasn't he done so? Several million going away into Europe. But these are not African refugees he's stimulating. They are black, Af- uh, not Arab refugees, they're black African refugees. And they're pouring in at this time into Italy. Already Italy's having troubles accommodating them. They've got hotels full of people who don't pay for anything, they come from black Africa. Creating instability in Europe. Breaking Europe up. He knows what he's doing. He doesn't have to fight. He just causes chaos. So come back to what we're looking at in Ezekiel 38. Has Russia moved into the Middle East? Hey, sure has. Sure has in a big fashion. Now we're going to look at, will ally itself and take control of Europe? Let's have a look what goes. Now we know that from the Bible. There's your Ezekiel 38, which you've got open in front if you want to check it out. Mago, Central Europe, Goma, France, allying itself with Russia. So there's the names in Ezekiel 38, right across Europe. And what do we expect? So almost all of Europe will be allied with Russia in the end. It's as clear as day. We've known that for 140 years since Elpis Israel was written. All right? Now, has that happened? Well, about two or three years ago, Russia moved in against Ukraine. Turkey down here, okay? And here are Romania and such like. 
moved in against Ukraine. Then, late last year, they bumped up the number of troops on the borders of Ukraine by another mere 55,000. 55,000 extra troops preparing for war. Here they're pouring them into the area. Massive flood. Now they want to terrorise Europe. They're causing chaos through the Arab immigrants and now the black African immigrants. Now they want to terrorise them. Since the Iron Curtain came down, they've been developing weapons. Have a look at this one. It's got the name Satan too. It's a missile weighing 100 tonnes. Right? So it's no baby. And on it it's got four weapons. Four nuclear hydrogen bombs. These bombs are thousand odd times bigger than an atom bomb dropped on Hiroshima. And there's 12 of them. One of those missiles can be directed at, say, Texas or France and will wipe out the whole of France, the whole of Texas, one only. Wouldn't you be frightened? Wouldn't you try and be friendly with Mr Putin rather than let him try out his guy forks on you? Stagger me. Hasn't stopped there. They've just, last this year, launched a, a new satellite, a new missile. It does a mere 7,400 kph. And Britain is saying, we build aircraft carriers and they're useless. They'll be destroyed in a moment. We can't defend against it. And so, in the same time as that's going on, Mr Trump's come to power and he can see that Europe is not spending enough on weaponry and it, they want him to come over and defend against it and he can see the problems. He says, if you want us to come and defend us, you've got to start paying some money. You've got to send some money over here. You spend less than 2%, we spend 7% on weaponry an army. And you're expecting us to defend you. You've got to start developing weaponry and such like to save yourself. And here's Mrs Merkel. She can see darn well that they just haven't got the time. So what is she saying? German leader says Europe can no longer rely on Donald Trump. We can't, can't rely on him. So we've got to do something fast. And they know damn well they haven't got the time. The times in which we can fully count on others somewhere is over. World War I, World War II. Other countries came in to help. America was one of them, wasn't it? Europe can no longer rely on them. And that's indeed very true. And I'll show you another reason why in a minute. But now let's focus our attention for a minute on Eastern Europe. Now, this has got lots of detail. I hope you can you cope fine. But we're going into Eastern Europe. Remember one leg of Daniel's image, the Eastern leg. Here's Mr. Putin. It's a cartoon. At the door of Mr. Mrs. Greece's home. There's Mr. Putin saying, oh dear, I'd love you if you'd like to come over my side. And there is the Prime Minister of Greece with somebody we all know, Mr. Putin. So they did a poll over there. And the results was most in Greece would choose to join up with Russia. Why? Because they're afraid. Russia's virtually on their border and they're not alone. Look at this. Bulgaria and Moldavia have got pro-Russian leaders too. Here they are. Here's Ukraine and Russia's just over here. Here's Greece down here. All of these are fearful of what's going on. And so they've installed, voted in, two pro-Russian presidents. Not the only country, Serbia and Montenegro. What are they doing? They're getting their weapons from Russia. That shows the way they're leaning. You know, if something breaks down, you can't go over to USA to fix up your aircraft. You have to go to Russia to get it fixed up. And again, further to that, here's the leader of Hungary saying, oh, the Russians are nice guys. Uh, they're not really a threat to us. So country by country, it's just capitulating. 
They can see the writing on the wall. Now, I want to go from here, right up here, to a country little area called Kalin, Kaliningrad. Here we are. There it is. When the Iron Curtain came down, there was one territory alone that did not become independent. It was the territory of Kaliningrad, just below these countries here, north of Poland. Tiny little place. All right? But Russia has controlled that ever since. And they have been pouring in weapons into it. Pouring weapons into it. Nuclear missiles. Tanks. Soldiers. And they're in the middle of Europe. Not quite, but almost. Huge numbers are there. But now, look at this. Look at the date, first of all. Five days ago, the leading, one of the world's leading newspapers, The Economist, says this. Russia's biggest war game in Europe since the Cold War alarms NATO. An article out up, uh, articles come out saying, will this trigger World War III? Some are saying, will this trigger Armageddon? Russia has practices on the borders of Europe every four years. The next one is about three weeks ago. Away. Last time they did so, uh, they said they had only about 4,000 troops on the borders of Israel. Uh, of Europe, it was 12,000, they told Fibs. This time, they said, oh, we're only going to have 100,000. They told Fibs last time, what's it going to be this time? And they've been requested or got ordered in Belarus, where they're going to go, which is an ally of Russia, 4,000 railway carriages already to take their soldiers across and the weapons across. Just think of it. Look at the date. We're right at the edge of something. And they are fearfully worried. The biggest war manoeuvres in Europe since the end of the Cold War, right on the borders of Europe. Has Europe got their number of soldiers necessary? I don't think so. And here we are. Here's the leader of Lithuania. Russia is a threat to us. To all of Europe, can't you see? That's what she was saying. And now come back to our list of really major events. Russia is placing huge numbers of troops in Belarus, which many fear may lead to World War III. Paper after paper are saying that. You know, look, go back a little bit. Go back a couple of months. Here we are. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania were very worried because of Russia on their borders. They went to America. America said, yeah, we'll put some soldiers in your countries. They put about a thousand in each. What for, did they say? Well, they can hold the airports long enough for us to land in equipment. How long will it take you to get the equipment in? They said, in 48 hours we'll be landing in there. The leader of Estonia said... We trade with Russia. There's a highway between us and Russia. They'll be in our capital city and will fall in four hours, not 48 hours. Four hours, it's all over. And since that time, they've come out with these maps. So the West has got troops in there, those sort of numbers. And they're saying 10,000 star, we don't know how many, but more than that, along the borders of Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, the Baltic states. So they then asked the NATO boss, how long would it take to get those states? Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland. How long before they'd fall? So the US commander was asked that question. He looked at the number of American troops that were there and everything he said, max 60 hours. All over. 60 hours and it's gone. All right? And, yes, so Britain moves in a few more troops, 120. That'll help you. Russia, America pulled in a few more troops, 1,100, that'll help you. It's just numbers. What, state, what are they trying to do? NATO is placing troops in Baltic states in the hope that it ward off the Russian invasion. That Russia would think, oh, I don't want to go killing Americans and British and things like that. You know, I won't attack. 
So things are moving. Russia will invade or ally itself with Western Europe. So we looked at Eastern Europe, didn't we? Now we're going over the other side. Here, I've showed you this one before, but here, NATO is just like a piece of paper. Just a few numbers of soldiers hoping to frighten off the big bear, Russia. How many have they got? Well, NATO put together last year an army of 31,000 to stand on the borders of the whole of Europe. At that point, Russia had 70 times more. 70 times more. And now, Russia's economy is slowing down because people aren't buying their equipment. So the young fellows there who haven't got jobs now are being used as call-ups. And their army is growing in size. Growing in size. As I told you, some are being employed to go down into, Israel, into Syria. And so we can see the situation developing. So late last year... The ex-NATO boss came out with a new book. There's the front cover. That was his opinion. There he is. General Sheriff, ex-commander of NATO, said this year is likely. We cannot be dogmatic, of course, but he thought it would be. He was seeing a bit deeper than I know about what's going on. And when that book came out, oops, sorry, I've gone a little too fast. The computer has indigestion at times, <laughs> I think. Let's hope it's come right this time. No, it hasn't. Don't worry about it. But there were headlines in the newspapers in October. And that was only one week of headlines. Every one of them came, contained World War III in it somewhere. And these weren't from, you know, weak papers. These were sometimes prominent papers like the International Business Times and such like. So there we are. World War Three in the headlines just in one week. I could have counted other weeks. Didn't have enough space to put the PowerPoint up. I just did one week. Europe is fearfully worried of what's going on. Now last year I probably showed you this. But one of the American papers, a very significant paper called Stratfor, very reliable reporter, said this, that Europe is likely to break up. They're afraid. They'll break up. Their economy is in not in good shape. But I thought it was interesting. If you put, look at the map, there's where, way back in AD 400, remember Europe was invaded by the barbarians? The Huns, the Vandals, the Visigoths, the Burgundians, the Barbarians, ten, and carved up into ten tribes, the ten toes, not tribes, ten nations. Okay? It happened back then. We know it's going to happen again. Well, let's have a look at what that magazine said. And if we put that line on it where that red boundary is, there it is. Have a look at that area and count the nations in it. Ten. So the situation is set up so that Daniel's image could stand up in a moment. It's amazing. But let's come back to this. Now, I hope I'm not going too far. If I am and somebody's losing the point, don't hesitate to ask a question. That's fine. I like that. But So Russia will ally or take Europe? Looks like it. Looks like it. But further to that, it will ally itself with the Shiite Middle East nations. Now, what are they? Well, let's have a look at it. Here they are. Ezekiel 38 says, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, which is Pakistan of old. Okay? So, let's have a look at it. There they are. There's the map. And let's put Persia of old on it. Yes, it's that territory. And is that allied, allied to Russia? Yes, it is. All of it is allied to Russia. They are the Shiite, more fanatical Arab nations. All right? But let's look particularly at Iran. All right? In Iran, what's going on in Iran? Well, Iran is building nuclear, miss uh, uh, nuclear reactors all over the place. What do you need nuclear reactors for? Well, you might like it to get energy, nuclear power stations. They don't need it. They've got plenty of oil, 
plenty of natural gas. They don't need it. What in the heck do they want all these reactors for? Well, they just want it for, to put something on the, t on the top of their missiles. They've been building missiles. Look, and they told Israel, when we're ready, we'll wipe you out in nine minutes. Nine minutes and you'll be over. How can they do that? Atom bombs. And they're flat out trying to develop out atom bombs with the help of North Korea. And also with the help of somebody else. This is not quite the particle I wanted to put up there, but Russia has offered to build another 10 nuclear reactors in Iran. Their ally. Well, that's what the Bible said. And now, America's upset over it. Mr Trump is saying, we're going to boycott you because you're going too far. Look what yesterday's paper, or the day before's paper said. Iran is sending its warships to the Atlantic Ocean, that's off America, amid a massive new military build-up. Look at the date, 14th today, 16th. Right? Iran is preparing to send a flotilla of warships to the Atlantic Ocean to be off USA because USA is trying to boycott her to stop her developing weapons like North Korea. Incredible, isn't it? How can we say we've got any time long left? The time is super short, it would seem. Oh, yes. God in his mercy could back off for a little while and slow it all down to give us a bit of time. But remember, we, the Lord comes at a time you think not. And I think that many in the ecclesia might think that way. To relax, lay back. When we're seeing all this going on. So, Russia did ally itself with the Shiite, moder uh, Shiite nations. But now, Russia... Israel must dwell confidently in the land. I'm going to show you a few things that you already know. But that word safely does mean in the margin, confidently. And if you go to the New York Times, one of the world's leading papers, they've got a list of some of the best weapons in the world. And a lot of them are built in Israel. Here's tanks. They're controlled by girls who, when they come out of high school, they go into the army. What do they do when they go into the army? They walk out of their house in their uniform and go to a big halls out through Tel Aviv. And they're put in front of computers. And they play computer games. No, not computer games. They control tanks. And military naval vessels. Like they've got a naval vessel that goes up the Persian Gulf that does 70 kph. Nobody's on board. Because in rough waters, their stomach would be damaged at 70 kph. But these girls are controlling them and they can fire cruise missiles. High-tech stuff. They're running drones. That's as big as a Boeing. and can fly right across Iran and be over the top for several days. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Satellites and such like. Their new missile, I jokingly say, it doesn't miss. You know why? It's called David's Sling. Could David Sling miss? Anyhow, I just like that name. <laughs> All right. The Bible says to us in Ezekiel 38, they must be in the midst of the land. The word midst is translated lofty point, high point, navel, the middle of the land. That's the West Bank. Is that happening? Well, have a look at the size of the sediments in the West Bank as time goes by. They're shrinking. Israel is sending people in there. They've got huge numbers of Jews coming into the country. Where do they put them? You know, they don't want to use the farmland up. And much of the mountain country is pretty well useless. So they're building little shacks up there like this. I joke. But that's what they're building to put people up in. It's amazing. So, Israel is dwelling confidently. Let's move on. Russia forms a religious alliance. Does Ezekiel 38 say that? Here you look. Here's a bit of Ezekiel 38. 
The key word of Ezekiel 38 is this one. So he blew it kahal. It's used six times in Ezekiel 38. All right? Very, very important word. Use four, verse 4, verse 7, verse 13, verse 15. Sometimes twice in that same verse. Sometimes the noun is used, sometimes the verb is used. But they are cognate words. Verse 4, 7, 13 and 15. But what does it mean? There it is again. There's those words. The Hebrew word kahal is tri- used often for a religious assembly. It's often translated in, the, in some Bibles, septu, a synagogue. In the Septuagint, it's rendered on occasions church. It's a religious assembly of nations. And is Russia assembling nations together? Too right. Last year, there is the leader, there's the Pope, who signed a deal with the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church in Cuba. So the Russian Orthodox Church now has to some degree come under the control of the papacy. And we surprised? Of course not. Encyclopedia Britannica spoke that in 726 that division took place between Europe, the east and western legs. And at that point it was a division on religion. Now you do the sums. Daniel chapter 12 said it'll last for 1,260 day years. Add it up. Sure enough, that's when they went over in Cuba. The deal was signed. A religious alliance is forming between Catholicism and the whole of Europe. I could give you more evidence of that, but we haven't time. So there it is. Amazing. So that image is coming together while we watch it, somewhat on religious grounds. And of course the Pope is not pro-Israel. He is a paper, an Israeli paper. The Vatican is always against Israel. That's what they say. The Vatican always sides with Israel's enemies. It's anti-Semitic. The Pope would like Jerusalem as his capital. Well, let's move on. Time's not with us. Now, the next thing is, Britain and the Commonwealth and the Sunnis must form an alliance which opposes Russia. That's what the Bible says, doesn't it? Sheba Deden, the Sunni Arab countries, will ally themselves with Tarshish. Well, last year we did the fact that Britain would leave the EU and did leave the EU. There it is. It's a maritime power, island power, reached by Jonah. He was going to sail that way, wasn't he? Didn't get there, of course. It's an island nation. As well as that, the exports... Well, I should ask the young fellows what this means. S, N, P, B, C, U, A, G. But they export metals, don't they? Tin, copper. They mined it. And it came into the Middle Middle East in the Bronze Age. That's where they got it, from Britain, from Cornwall. Those dark green areas is where they mined it. So there we are. Tarshish is described also as a young lion. All right? There's the young lion. Stacking. And we, I came over here one other time and I put some names over the top of them and one of them I had is Fiji. But unfortunately, I didn't keep it. I should have kept it up there for you tonight. But anyhow, there we go. <laughs> All right, so the Commonwealth countries. Tarshish and Sheba and Dedan. There's Sheba. There's Dedan. Is that allied with the, ta- with the Western countries at the moment? Well, first of all, Britain left, as we know. There was the vote. And it came through. And here is the EU boat, (laughs) as it symbolised. Here's Greece vomiting over the side. France is walking the gangplank. Mrs Merkel's looking at economic failure looming. And meanwhile, here's Britain (laughs) sailing off into the sunset. Okay, leaving it behind. And here we have now a very pro-Russia, a uh, pro-Israeli uh, Prime Minister. And even more so than when I last spoke to you about it. If you ask me why, I'll show you. So did it do so? Yes, it left the European alliance right on time. 
Isaiah 23 says 70 years. When she was weak at the close of World War II, she finally left, allied herself with Europe, and she finally left 70 years and a few months later in 2016. And it's beginning to prosper because of that, I believe. Now, what about America? Well, Mr Trump has come to power. He says, make America British again. Can I join as an associate member of the Commonwealth? So she, he asked Theresa May. And somebody else came along and said, yeah, that's OK. That lady, do you know her? She said, too right. I'll have him back. So the story is that that is the prospect at the moment. And they were, began doing naval manoeuvres in the Persian Gulf together within a month. So, the British Commonwealth Sunni Alliance. There it is. We're going to look at that again from a slightly different point of view for a moment. I'm coming back to it for a second time. Here's what Brother Thomas said. We haven't time to look at it in any detail, but he said... The Middle East scenario between the Euphrates and the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea, that area down there, he said, will be oppressed by two powers. One, Eden, Moab and Ammon, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, that area. And the other one, Assyrian. The Assyrian of the latter days is Russia, isn't it? So he said that area there will protect the Jews and it will be allied with Tarshish, Britain. Well, is that happening? Well, look, just have a look at this. Just look at this. Only a few months ago, the Hezbollah rushed a 1,000 troops to the South Syrian border and they were armed, armaments came across for them from Iran. Boom. It didn't get there. Nobody knows, nobody will admit to having done so, but it... Planes came in and blew it up. The Russians couldn't see it on their radar. But um, some people in the convoy said they had stars on their wings. So uh, we'll work that out. For you. Leave that one for yourself to work out who that was. But when that happened, to stop any further movement taking place, America, Britain, moved with Jordan from here up to here and established a base in, Iran, uh, in uh, Iraq to stop further movement across that area. And then when Mr Trump came to power, number one journey, the first place he went to, see the Saudis, the area of Sheba and Dede. Went over to see them. And they signed a deal. America will supply this area, Sheba and Dede, with $110 billion of weaponry. Are they going to be allied together? Certainly. And not only that, he said to them, if you want to defend yourself against Iran, the only, body, only power that will really give you some help in the Middle East is Israel. Start talking to them. And they have been. They have been. So there he is. And so this area here, as we said before, or here we are again, allying itself with the Tarshan countries and showing itself somewhat pro-Israel. So here's a little bit before Mrs Theresa May over talking to the Saudis. What about establishing a base, a British base, a permanent British base in Bahrain? Exactly where you would expect it. So that you can get her ships in. And here they're coming. US, UK, Australian, French ships going in there, into that area of the Persian Gulf, working together. France shouldn't be there, but time will permit. It will change. So here was Trump. He went over to see this gentleman, the leader of Saudi, and 17 other rulers in the Middle East and talked to them. You can go on the web and see his speech. He spoke for an hour to them all really fluently, telling them what they should be doing and how they should handle things in regard to Iran and Israel and things like that. And they've been listening. 
And then he flew. This is not normal. He got in his plane and flew from there straight into Israel. That's not allowed. He flew over Arab countries, flew straight into Israel. And then he went to the Wailing Wall. Okay? So things are moving at an incredible pace. So now, there we can see Britain, the Commonwealth and the Sunni nations are allied together and opposing the Russian, not yet European, alliance in the Middle East. Opposing them. We saw those troops moving into uh, Syria. But now let's look at the last two. That gives to us the time clock. Well, not so much the time clock, but what remains to happen. Now, we expect, don't we, he shall enter into the glorious land, this is Russia, and, shall, and many countries shall be overthrown. So into that area comes Russia. But into this area here must come the Tarshan power. But these shall escape out of Russia's hand, even Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. They'll come in in there. Britain. Commonwealth countries. Fiji, no doubt. Fiji's already somewhat in there. Okay? So things are moving dramatically at the moment. The critical question for us is when? How long have you got? And I believe, brethren and sisters, we need to be taking the truth. You know, if you think you took the truth seriously before, you need to be utterly serious now. Okay, it could all back off. And we could be given time. But we need to be taking things very, very seriously. Now, just before I go further on these PowerPoints for a minute, that's part of the reason I've done Hezekiah as a series with you. Because Hezekiah instituted a reformation when the ancient Russian power, the Syrian power, was on the borders of Judah. And he instituted a reformation that saved the nation. It's got lessons for us. Critical lesson for us. At this moment when there is no time left, it would seem. So let's remind ourselves. That's what the military leaders are saying. This is what the scientists are saying. They've got a doomsday clock. And that was printed, and that's where they said we were, 2.5 minutes away. But now they say it's 30 seconds because they came out with that big missile. That Satan 2 missile. They've shifted the clock, they reckon, to about 2 seconds before 12 o'clock. So the time is super short. But also we have other news. This. There's the dates relate to Israel. The first date is when the first Zionist conference was established in Baal, Switzerland. Balfour Declaration. Britain said the Jews can return to the land. UN voted in the State of Israel. The Sixth Day War. Let's do the sums. Daniel, Noah was told, from when I begin to work, it'll be 120 years and judgment will come. And the flood came. And 120 years to that, look. Balfour Declaration. We know what a jubilee is. Add two jubilees, two 50 year periods. Okay? Take the voting in the state of Israel. Jesus said, The generation that sees that will see the coming of my, of my coming. What's a generation? Psalm 90, verse 10 says, Three score years and ten. I need to say no more. And the six day war, add a jubilee to it. What does that mean? I don't know. I cannot be dogmatic. All I can say is, the times look right and the signs look right. Isn't that what the Apostle Paul said to the Thessalonians, which we read? Sure looks that way. So look what Brother Thomas said. 168 years ago. The future movements of Russia are notable signs of the times. The end of all things as present constitute will be on the ha at hand when it moves. Russia's in Israel or on the borders of Israel. 
Russia is building troops up frantically on the borders of Europe. How long have we got? We don't know. But look at this. Jesus himself said, And there shall be upon the earth a distress of nations with perplexity. No way out. Means hearts failing them for fear. Is that happening now? Is that happening now? Look what he went on to say. When those things begin to happen, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Has it begun? Look back at this. Threats to the world peace. And the last one we're looking at, North Korea. North Korea. Oh, Americans are breathing a sigh of relief the last two days because the North Koreans said, well, wait a little while and see what they're going to do. Here's what came up. Brink of war. North Korea situation more concerning than ever after a news to rate. But he said, I'll wait a couple of days. Just see how those idiotic Americans behave. Today, North Korea, once again, look at the date, yesterday, vowed to attack the US territory of Guam. Kim said he would wait to see what the reckless Yanks would do next before launching four missiles. <coughs> Stack him. Is he real? Well, they got the missiles. Have they got the nuclear warheads? It looks like they might have. It's frightening to see what's going on. But it's not for us. It's thrilling. It's exciting. But it's a cause for us to be utterly motivated in the truth. Not fooling around and procrastinating. We're always at the meeting. We're always doing daily readings. We're always focused on the things that are right and true. We don't fritter away our time. We haven't got it. So come back to where we began. Is Armageddon on the way? Great battle. The spirits go forth to the kings of the earth, to the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Are they gathering for it? Looks that way. And he says, I come as a thief. Blessed is he, that's you, who watcheth and keepeth his or her garments lest they walk naked. And they see their shame. Let's be ready and prepared and utterly diligent in the Word of God, not half hearted in anything. Then we'll be part of that wonderful host that in the kingdom age will see the earth filled with the glory of the Lord. We have a wonderful prospect before us, but be serious about the truth, brethren and sisters. Love the things of God with all your heart and be diligent in our walk toward the kingdom. We don't know how long we've got, but it does look very short. Thank you.